Right, here we go. Mr. Lewis, how do you feel about roller coasters? Oh, I like them, roller coaster of love. Let's roll. So, I've got a bone to pick with you. Oh, that's unusual. I've, uh, we normally I've, get on just fine. Uh, well, because I've, I've been watching you. No, oh, uh, that's a bit weird. I've noticed that you've been engaging in, in some degree of Babel activity. Oh, you've been you using a bit, okay. of, the, uh, bit not, of the ES6, the ES7. Not quite as terrifying as I thought it might have been this. But you, you're the kind of person who, who says, and I've heard you say this, that you don't like writing code that isn't the code that ends up being executed in the browser. Correct. Like, Can't you don't it. like those don't little like middle steps. You're kind of anti-transpiler. I am sort of anti-transparent. I want to feel like the code I write is the code that runs. Right. And I'm happy for a little bit of wool to be pulled over my eyes, but I want to feel like I can back out of it. Uh, so I don't think that's changed. I think for me, when I look at something like Babel, uh, or Babel Fire or any of that, one thing is I feel like, well, I feel like I could switch it out for Tracer or I could switch it out for something else. Because, yeah, because it's an open standard, I guess you, yes. there, are, there are independent implementations of that standard. Exactly. Oh, okay. and, yeah, it's, so it's like, it feels like this is the JavaScript I'm going to be writing, right? So a while from now. So if it's like, if it's going to get me there, then that's fine. I, I, I'm okay with that. And then the other thing is, if you look at the ES5 that it generates, it's like, it makes sense, it's fine. And, uh -huh. I, and I feel like when you look at some other things, whether that, I don't know, CoffeeScript or TypeScript, something like that, you, you, can't, you can never say that because it's like, uh, you're always going to be transpiling across. Yeah. I had this issue actually, I was using a project, um, NPM installing something, using it, uh, and right. there was a bug. And I thought, as a citizen of the internet, I am going to do a pull request, I'm going to, going to try and fix that. And um, Yeah, and, and, and when I got onto GitHub and click, 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 CoffeeScript. Oh, I was like, well, okay, yeah, no, bye bye. Well, now, now, step one of making this fix is learn coffee script. Yeah, and, and it's like, I don't, unless I really, really care about fixing the bug, it's not. I don't, for me, it's like JavaScript become, you know, ES6, ES7, ES whatever. Mm -hmm. But like you say, this kind of, oh, let's do learn, learn TypeScript or coffee script or any of the, anything else. It's just like, I've got to really want to go off and do that for some reason. And I don't see what that reason is because JavaScript for me, for everything is fine. I actually really liked Babel, uh, if, if for no other reason than its source maps were just super. So even though I wasn't really sort of aiming for that, when I did get an error, um, it was like, you know, whatever .js line, whatever. And it was like, yeah, that is the correct line. And Well, so even if you're not using source maps with Babel, it, the, the output is actually pretty sensible for the most part. Yes. But as you say, source maps just make it completely transparent. It's almost like you're not using a transpiler at all. Exactly. So I'm happy with the illusion of it, I, I think. That's probably what it comes down to. But mm. as I say, you, you're right. If you look at the actual code it generates, for me, I was just like, yeah, that, that's not necessarily code I'd write, but that's OK. It's, it's just about manageable and readable. So go on then. What, what are your? What, what are your big hitters in ES6 uh, and 7 world? What's, what's your faves? I, my faves. Your faves. Um, a contentious one would be uh, classes. I actually really like classes because um, people are like, what's wrong with the prototype? You're turning you're your back on prototype. You're still using the prototype. It's just sugar. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But a nice sugar at that. Very yeah. nice. Yeah, because I, I, I don't know. I always Refined mess it up. sugar. Like if I'm if I'm doing like something dot prototype equals object dot object dot create the thing I'm extending and I keep forgetting the dot prototype on the end there. But, that, and but that's one just, of about it's LMT. really difficult. It's really yes. awkward it's compared to class thing extends thing. But and that's that's the one way you do it in ES6. Like with the ES5, yeah. you've got 11 billion ways of doing it, and not all of them are good yep. necessarily or readable or what you want to see if you're looking at your own code six months from now or somebody else's code. So yeah. it kind of felt like. It was more like the code I want to write, more like the code I want to read. It's where we're going. It's a feature. It's not like somebody just went off piste and did something that they wanted to do. It's I, and I can barely remember how to spell function now. Yeah, because you've got you can within an object. It's just the, the name brackets off you go. Uh, yes. There's arrow. Fat arrow function fat was arrow. something else I, I really liked. Yep. Yeah, uh, we love a bit of fat arrow. Yeah, because a number of times I use request animation frame, set timeout, set interval, something yep. like that, and it's yep. like, oh. All of a sudden, I'm on the window scope, am I? Great, thanks for that. So bind, yeah. it's like, meh, don't worry. Don't like, I mean, I don't mind bind. It's better than var that equals this for me. It's, I don't. You I, don't like that. No, I don't do that equals this. I, but I will give it a, a specific proper variable name. Like what? Based on the name of the class. Like, well, okay. Jakey so, this, var jakey this so, equals. So if it's class vehicle, yeah. inside that, I will do var vehicle equals this, like lowercase vehicle equals this. And it's, 
oh, yeah, but it makes sense then. I, I don't like that because it's like, well, that's just as because this is a problem in, in JavaScript, I think. Yes. Like, this, you, you, so this what like, yeah. and and that's what one of the things that arrow functions solve is you 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 there tends to only be one option for what the this is, and it's the instance name. Yeah. Which I yeah, that, that makes way more. So it works for me. I really like that. Structuring I like. Beautiful. Uh, Beautiful. Especially for option objects. Yes. Uh, at the end of a with a default, function. right? To with, this is it. it. It becomes self-documenting. You can say, right, this this is optional, uh, but inside this object, here are the properties that I'm looking for, and here are their defaults. Yep. Um, but in any case, I feel like going back to your original question, it's like the reason I would use a transpiler today is an if and only if it lets me experience the future now, get used to like the future now. I think it's where we're going. Which you I, get with source maps. It feels like you can almost ignore the transpilers yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. And and as I say, the code that it generates makes sense to me. So I'm all up for that. Yay for transpilers. Yay. Cheers. <laughs> we need yeah. beers.